Now there was a time when I was a lad that all motorcycles came with a proper motorcycle helmet lock. A proper lock that accepted a proper key to actually lock the buckle of your helmet. Usually attached to the frame just below the seat where it was easily accessible when you got off the bike. Carefree days when you could just lock your helmet to the bike when you arrived at your destination and walk around unencumbered. Now, for the last 20 years or so, I've sort of developed the habit of carrying my helmet around with me because every bike that I've owned for the last 20 years hasn't had a helmet lock. They were designed to keep your helmet safe from casual thieves. And although I'm sure some motorcycle manufacturers somewhere do still include them on the bikes, they are pretty much a thing of the past now. Once again, it's a cost-cutting exercise. It's one of those places where manufacturers, by and large, have chosen to save some money at the manufacturing stage, at the inconvenience of the customer. Now, okay, the Triumph Bonneville T120 and T120 derived bikes does have a helmet hook underneath the seat. And initially, I wasn't aware it was even there. And it was only when I received one or two comments in my early videos asking me to warn T120 owners not to use it that I actually became aware of its existence. Now, I didn't actually shoot any footage of this while making this video because I wasn't going to mention it. But then I thought certain Triumph owners are going to bring it up in the comments section and try to make an argument out of it. So we'd best just mention it. Now, all it basically is, is a ridiculously thin piece of mild steel welded to the frame. In fact, it's so ridiculously thin and flimsy that at first glance, it just looks like a cable retainer. Now, I haven't actually tried it myself, but apparently a couple of firm yanks on the strap of the helmet and it just folds up, gives way, damaging your seat in the process. And hey presto, Billy Bike Burglar has a new helmet. By the looks of it, it cost about three of our great British pennies to make. And it's almost as though, after the fact, Triumph were a little bit embarrassed about it as well, because they barely mention it in the manual. In fact, I think the only reason it hasn't become a major topic of conversation, a major issue, is because 50% of owners are not aware of its existence. And the other 50% that are aware of its existence can see that it's got the structural integrity of a Walker's crisp packet and have decided not to use it. And that, of course, is before you take into consideration the fact that you have to remove and replace your seat in order to put your helmet on the hook and remove and replace your seat in order to take it off again. Or maybe not. Now I'm sure there is a grain of truth to it, and I'm sure it probably did happen once or twice somewhere. But there is this urban myth that manufacturers stop putting helmet locks on bikes because people would slash the straps with a knife and steal the helmets. And again, I'll tackle this now in order to preempt me having to spend the next two weeks tackling comments on this subject. First of all, using this method to steal a helmet renders the helmet useless because you can't fasten it on anymore. And as thick as thieves can be, taking the risk of brandishing a knife in public and then stealing property from a motorcycle in a manner that renders the helmet useless is a little bit silly. And in all the years that I myself used a motorcycle helmet lock, and in fact my friends used their motorcycle helmet locks, we were never victims of such a crime. And I'll go one further on that. Having spent a decade and a half as a police officer, I never encountered such a crime, nor did I speak to any other police officer that had encountered such a crime. So let's put that one to bed. Now, aftermarket helmet locks are not something that custom parts or aftermarket parts manufacturers like to get involved in. They're incredibly difficult things to design as an aftermarket part. They're also very expensive to produce. And they're a practical part. They're not something that is designed to look nice and improve the look of your bike. So sales are likely to be low on them. 
So it is understandable that most manufacturers give items like this a wide berth. But as we know, Motone Customs is not most manufacturers. If they see something missing from a bike that they know riders want, something that riders need, they'll throw themselves headfirst into the process of designing and making something to fit the bill. Now, for several years, Motone Customs have made a version for the air-cooled twins. And that version could be made to fit the liquid-cooled Bonnevilles. But Sam at Motone considered that this was a bit of a make-do-and-mend situation. He didn't like it. He wanted a bespoke item for the liquid-cooled Bonnevilles. Something that would come in at about the same price point, but would look the part. It would look as though it was designed to fit the bike it was fitted to. And once again, they've come up trumps, this time implementing new materials and new techniques, resulting in a helmet lock assembly that's even better than the original version. For example, this version is ambidextrous. It can be fitted to either side of the motorcycle. So you can, if you like, fit one on either side of the bike, sort of his and her helmet locks. This is achieved by a brand new High pressure die cast aluminium fixing bracket designed with exactly the same profile left and right so that it can be fitted on either side of the bike. The lock itself I'm told is a high quality item and it's encased in a steel body which has been powder coated black to match the frame of the bike. It's a simple operation to lock and unlock it and the stainless steel locking staple itself doesn't need the key to lock it, it can just be pressed down to engage it. All the stainless steel fittings are included with the kit and it's a really simple job to fit this, it takes about 4 minutes. I'll quickly go through it with you. Now the actual fixing bracket fits behind the top eyelet of the shock absorber on either side and it will fit the T100 the T120, the Street Twin, the Street Scrambler, the Street Cup, the Thruxton and the Speed Twin. It may also fit one or two other of the liquid cool Bonnevilles but Motone haven't had chance to try them out as yet. Make sure that your bike is on its centre stand if it has one. If it doesn't have a centre stand I would advise that you use a bike jack or something similar to take the weight off the back wheel. Unfasten the top fixing bolt for the shock absorber and remove it and then slacken off the bottom fixing bolt but don't remove it all the way. Just a few turns to create some free play in the shock absorber because you'll need that free play in order to slip the top eyelet out from its mounting position. Then just using your hands gently prise the top of the shock absorber away from its mounting peg. Now it's important to mention here that it does actually sit on a mounting peg which is welded onto the frame. The actual fixing bolt is only there to stop it from slipping off while the bike's in motion. Then place the mounting bracket in the manner shown, depending which side of the bike you're on obviously, and slide it onto that mounting pin and then install over that the stainless steel washer supplied with your kit. And then replace the top of your shock absorber. From what I remember, the original Triumph shock absorbers were a looser fit. Obviously, I have the Hagen Nitros fitted to my bike. And they always have been a very snug fit onto the mounting pin. If necessary, in order to get it back in place, you may need to use a small rubber mallet to just gently tap it back onto the pin. Now, before you replace the mounting bolt, in your kit there's a stainless steel spacer and this needs to be inserted into the remainder of the top shock absorber eyelet in order to fill the gap that's been left by the bracket. If necessary, use a little bit of grease to lubricate it and then use the nut to wind that spacer into the gap. That'll ensure that it's inserted precisely with even pressure and that it doesn't cause any damage as it goes in. Then remove your fixing bolt to ensure that everything's gone in evenly and it is as it should be. Then you can replace your stock washer. Now obviously in my case I've got the pannier rails and they go over the top of the stock washer. At this stage you can tighten up both your top and your bottom 
shock fixing bolts and if my memory serves me correctly both the top and the bottom fixing bolts should be tightened up to 28 newton meters it's then just a really simple matter to actually install the lock there's a little locating pin at the top of the lock which inserts into a hole at the top of the bracket insert the locating pin into the locating hole and then using the stainless steel bolt supplied fasten it in place and tighten it up and that's all there is to it Now as I said earlier, all too often custom parts and aftermarket parts manufacturers tend to ignore items like this helmet lock. And I think credit is due to Motone for picking up the baton on this one and going ahead and producing a very strong, neat and tidy, high quality solution like this. Looking at it, I think it's about as inobtrusive as Motone could possibly have made it. It doesn't get in the way of the pillion rider and it's very convenient in use. A helmet lock is a blast from the past which brings back some of the convenience of biking that we used to enjoy back in the day. Reassuringly backed up by the fact that it is a genuine quality Motone accessory. Quality that we all know by now we can trust. I will, as always, leave a link in the video description down below to Motone's webpage for this helmet lock. For those that would like to have a look. Once again, thank you so much for watching this and all my other videos. I really do appreciate the time that people put aside to watch my videos twice a week. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you are new to the channel, I'd like to point out that I do have getting on for 300 videos as it stands at the moment, so please feel free to peruse them. I will of course be back on Friday, so until then, ride safely and I'll see you soon.